What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're going to show you the best things to do while visiting Orlando. Let's do it. All right, Island Hoppers, welcome to the theme park capital of the United States. This here is Gatorland. This here is probably the most Florida theme park in all of Orlando. So if you really want to see what wild and crazy Florida is like, this place, Gatorland, has it. They have safaris that go around the park. They also have a swamp nearby that's a totally natural occurring swamp. But really plenty of jumbo-sized gators, and they let you feed them, which is even more exciting. It's $34.99 for adults and $24.99 for kids and free for military with ID. This here is the all-inclusive day resort known as Discovery Cove. Now at this all-inclusive day resort, it doesn't have a hotel. The prices do vary depending on if you're a Florida resident or a military member, or if you're just visiting here as a tourist. Uh, I've seen them as low as $200 per person per day. Rates do fluctuate. It is part of the Bush Gardens family along with SeaWorld and also Aquatica, which we will be showing you. And with that, you can sign up for different benefits if you're with Bush Gardens. But here you're gonna be able to swim with dolphins that's extra you can get a day bed cabana for you and the family snorkel in one of the reefs they've also got a lazy river an aviary and tons of relaxing vibes we have arrived at SeaWorld and now for the granddaddy of all Bush Gardens parks here in Orlando this year is SeaWorld they've built so many roller coasters here I would say that it's actually better than Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure at this point just because the rides are so much faster. The only thing SeaWorld is really lacking is the themes. So if you need to be around Hulk or Shrek or King Kong or Jurassic Park, then you're gonna find that at Islands of Adventure Universal. But here at SeaWorld, the rides are just that awesome. And you combine that with the animal shows, they still have the Orca Encounter, which people absolutely love no matter what you hear online or what you've heard elsewhere. Also at SeaWorld, they have Sharks Underwater Grill. This here is a restaurant. It feels like you're inside the aquarium when you're watching all of these fish go by. It's right next to the Sharks Tube, right there at the Sharks Encounter. But yeah, this is a really cool restaurant to bring the kids or just hang out and relax. You should probably try to book a reservation before going. It does fill up fast. Let's now explore International Drive. International Drive doesn't have any theme parks, but they have more outdoor experiences, like you'll see a mini golf, you'll see some restaurants, plenty of restaurants actually. That's really what International Drive is known for. You'll see Senior Frogs, different seafood restaurants, and Hooters, but it's popular because this is where they do all the conferences in Orlando. You could rent one of these scooters to get up and down International Drive if you don't feel like walking. You can see the ice bar here, but let's highlight some more. Let's explore Icon Park. Icon Park has this big Ferris wheel. They also have a Ripley's Believe It or Not here. They have a high flyer ride where you can go all the way up to the top on a swing. And then they have some other museums and Extreme Virtual Reality, Museum of Illusions, and tons of restaurants. You'll also come across the iFly indoor skydiving. If you've ever wanted to do skydiving without actually jumping out of an airplane, the iFly indoor skydiving seems to be the best way to get familiarized with what it feels like to be zero gravity, just floating solo or in tandem. It is $229 each. If you do four to six people, $205. It just depends on if you're doing tandem skydiving. Along International Drive, you'll see the upside down house. This here is Wonderworks Orlando, a 28,000 square foot indoor amusement park. There's over a hundred different exhibits and interactive entertainment education for all ages. And right next to Wonderworks is The Point, which is a popular nightlife and entertainment area. They're gonna have a comedy club here and several different high-end restaurants. So you can see International Drive is loaded with things to do and The Point is where you'll do most of your nighttime entertainment and fun. You can also go to downtown Orlando. We're just not going to highlight downtown Orlando for this particular uh, travel guide. But if you want a nightlife, also check out down there. We're now at the most famous water park in Orlando. This year is Aquatica. Tickets for Aquatica are around $100. If you're military, you can also apply for a half off discount. Just depends on what kind of deals you're able to find online. As with all of these parks, I highly recommend going online and trying to finesse that and find the best deals. But Aquatica and Volcano Bay, it's between these two water parks for the best park in Orlando. I don't really know which one 
is going to be best for you because they're both awesome. But I felt like Aquatic, I had more exhilarating rides. It's part of Bush Gardens. Now let's talk about some Disney parks. This here is Animal Kingdom. Of all of the Disney theme parks, I would say this is my personal favorite. We'll show you the other ones as well, but I really like this one because I thought they had the funnest rides. The Pandora Avatar experience is amazing, and the Safari for animals is pretty cool. The gorilla exhibit is awesome. So it just depends on what you're looking for. But I would say if you have teenagers or you're a couple, maybe consider Animal Kingdom above all else. If you plan to visit more than one Disney park, try to get a multi-day pass and save some money. Otherwise, it's about $140 per person. If you do end up going to Animal Kingdom, do check out Expedition Everest. This is an awesome ride. It's probably one of my favorite rides in all of Orlando. And if you can get that single rider pass like I got, you can ride it more than once quite easily. It really gets the blood flowing and the adrenaline up. You'll feel alive right after this one. Now we're here at Magic Kingdom. This is where you're gonna see the Princess Castle. You're gonna see Mickey Mouse, Goofy. And of course, this one's for the younger kids. Also, couples enjoy going here. Uh, older kids like it. They have a parade. They say the best parade is in the evening time. And again, part of the multi-day pass is how I would recommend doing Disney. If you can get the three-day or the two-day, you can do more than one park in a day, then go for it. If you wanted to do the four-day park hopper, that's gonna include four days, four parks for $99 a day, comes out to $396 per person. If you want the three-day, three-park package, that's $89 a day, $267 per ticket. What do you guys say now we explore Epcot? Epcot is also one of the four Disney parks that are included in this. So you're gonna have Epcot, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Magic Kingdom. Epcot being more for adults, I would say. It's got an international cuisine uh, environment. So if you ever wanted to feel like you're in Europe or Asia or Africa at any given time, Epcot's for you. They also have rides. Most of the park wraps around this here lake. They also have Guardians of the Galaxy ride, which is almost always sold out. It's considered one of the best rides in Orlando. I had the Disney Fast Pass and it was still sold out for the day. All right, guys, now we're gonna explore Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios is just like the Disney version of Universal Studios, except they have cooler shows and better rides, I would say, than Universal Studios. The Star Wars attraction seems to be the big ticket in town. Again, even if you have Fast Pass, it might be hard to ride that. The Slinky Dog is also one of the favorites for people who go to this park, but they have other rides here. It feels like you're in Hollywood, California, except you're in Florida. Now, if you wanna get the Disney experience without going to the actual theme parks, you may consider going to Disney Springs. This is free to enter. It kind of reminds me a bit of Epcot without the entrance fee, so that's a good thing. But here they have malls, they have Legoland, they have Rainforest Cafe, and just a nice place to walk around and enjoy an evening. Here in downtown Orlando, we have Lake Eola. This is another free attraction that you can just hang out and relax on a calming environment. So Lake Eola in downtown, they have a nice fountain. And then you also have the Kennedy Space Center for those of you who are interested in NASA or learning about rockets and outer space, you may come on out here to Cape Canaveral and explore around the Kennedy Space Center. In 2024, they plan to have 30 launches, including nine from Kennedy Space Center. Back in Orlando now, here we are at Volcano Bay. This is a part of Universal. And like I said, it's either between Aquatica or Volcano Bay for the best water park. But really, if I had a choice between the two, I'm probably gonna go with Volcano Bay the more that I think about it. Now we're gonna explore around the Universal Parks themselves. This here is Universal City Walk. This is a free attraction. They have restaurants and some shopping you can do. But once you go through this, then you actually arrive at the theme park. First one I did was Universal Studios. And here you do have the two parks. You have Islands of Adventure, which is gonna be more of the roller coasters. And then you have Universal Studios, which is gonna be more of the shows and virtual reality experience. For these two parks, I do recommend getting the Park Hopper. I think you can get it for $170 online. We have arrived now at Universal Studios. But if you just wanna do Universal Studios alone with the virtual reality and the shows, that's gonna cost you around $118 for adults. Tickets do vary, so be sure to look online, try and take advantage of all coupons. The big ticket here is going to be the Harry Potter uh, Fire Breathing Dragon. You can see Shrek here. They've also got The Simpsons. 
and so much more that's related to the Universal Studios. But here is a look at that uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This one is at Universal Studios. They have one also at Islands of Adventure. But on the day I was here, the Fire Breathing Dragon was not going because it was windy. Now, here's the good thing about going to two parks. You get to ride the Hogwarts Express, and that's the only way to do it is if you're going to two parks in one day. So this connects to the Islands of Adventure, Harry Potter. The train itself looks amazing. It's this big buff train, but then when you're in it, you sit in this like virtual reality uh, caboose, and it just takes you over to the other park. We've come over to Islands of Adventure now. And you can see a whole nother side to the Harry Potter experience at Islands of Adventure. But this is where they're gonna have more roller coasters and more adrenaline pumping rides, especially for those of you who are older. And I really like the Jurassic Park ride. I like the roller coasters that they have here. But like I said, SeaWorld, believe it or not, has better roller coasters. This just has more of a theme park experience. One thing I would like to note is that the day I was here, it was raining and that really impacted my ability to ride a lot of the rides because they shut them down for weather delays. So be sure to check the weather report. Now, if you want to go out to the Everglades, you can do that here in Central Florida. They'll take you out to the Kissimmee Swamp Tour and Airboat. Uh, you can go out there and see some gators in the wild. There's a few different places in Central Florida, and some of them have zip line tours, like at Gatorland they have zip line, but if you wanna do some zip lining, this is some of the best you'll find anywhere in the world. So maybe consider getting up there and zipping around. We have now arrived at Old Town Kissimmee. Let's explore. Now the Old Town area here has restaurants, it has some rides. It's kind of like a generic theme park. It's not gonna cost you as much money. You can get some roller coaster thrills but it's more of like an outdoor experience. Kind of reminds me a bit of a fair or a carnival, if anything, but it's the old town of Kissimmee. I would suggest coming down here in the evening and giving your wallet a bit of a break, depending on how long you're gonna be in Orlando. There's definitely way less crowds in the afternoon than there is in the evening time here, so take that into account. If you need to do some shopping, the Florida Mall is the biggest mall in all of Orlando. I did some shopping here for some shoes, so it just depends on what you're looking for, but this is the big mall. I figured I'd put this in here because some of you are looking for that information, right? They also have the Florida Hotel here. Now, I'm gonna go over to Tampa Bay next, and I'm gonna show you around there. I will say, if you wanted to do a day trip to the Tampa Bush Gardens, that's gonna be where you're gonna get the best roller coasters. And if you're interested in seeing that full video next for Tampa Bay, click one of the end screens here, and it'll take you right to Tampa Bay, or you can see the 17 best places in Florida by clicking one of these links.